checking sound okay okay so we are live on youtube good evening everybody welcome to carwan my name is ishan sharma and we are back with another discussion um these are a series of conversations that we are hosting for the last one and a half month with writers with translators on historical fictions on on fictions that are i think the need of the hour because in a time when critical thinking is not allowed you have to move to stories stories that make you think so we started with daisy rockwell and then we had charu nivedita to talk about aurangzeb and finally for this conversation i am honored and delighted to host ambassador navdeep suri who has donned the hat of an ambassador for many many years before coming to the literary scene or ambassador was i think i i'll read out the official introduction to the translator of the book that we are going to discuss or the author that we are going to discuss nanak singh nanak singh ko uh, punjabi novel ka fa father mana ja janak mana jata hai he was somebody who started this whole revolution in the literary scene of punjabi and navdeep suri sahab is the grandson of nanak singh aaj hum unka unke unke jo bhi zakhira hai jo, jo bhi likha hua unka pura sansar hai लिटरेरी क्रिएशन है उसकी बात करेंगे उसका क्या इम्पैक्ट है आज के जमाने में हाउ डज दैट रिलेट टू अस इन द मॉडर्न टाइम्स इन द ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट सेंचुरी हाउ दैट स्टिल इज रेलिवेंट एंड इम्पॉर्टेंट इन द सी इन द इन द पॉलिटिकल सोशल सीन ऑफ इंडिया टुडे सो आई जस्ट रीड आउट द ऑफिशियल इंट्रोडक्शन बिफोर गोइंग इन टू द कॉन्वर्जेशन Navdeep Suri is a former diplomat who has served in India's diplomatic missions in Washington DC and London. He was India's ambassador to Egypt and UAE, High Commissioner to Australia, and Council General in Johannesburg. He has been striving to preserve the legacy of his grandfather Nanak Singh, to and to bring his works to a wider audience. He has translated into English the classic 1930s Punjabi poems like Pavitra Papi and Ath Kidhya Pool, and A Life Incomplete. His translation of Nanak Singh's lost poem Puni Vaisakhi was published in 2019 and. of the novel khoon do so hile hymns in blood in 2022 and finally a game of fire nanak singh is widely considered regarded as the father of the punjabi novel despite little formal education beyond the fourth grade he wrote an astounding 59 books which included 38 novels and an assortment of assortment of plays short stories poems essays and even a set of translations that he did himself He received the Sahitya Akademi Puraskar in 1962 for Ek Mia Do Talwara, and his novel Pavitra Papi was made into a Bollywood film long back in the 60s. Uh, so, and his one of his book Chitra Lahu was translated into Russian by Natasha Tolstoy. So, I think we are all set for a great conversation on Nanak Singh. But क्योंकि I I didn't know Nanak Singh before I read Hymns in Blood that came out last year. That was my first introduction to this literally genius uh, called Nanak Singh. क्योंकि ऐसा होता है जब जब कोई इंडियन भाषा में कोई किताबें आती हैं उसका ट्रांसलेशन बड़ा देर में आता है. तो हम जो जिन्हें वो भाषाएं नहीं आती उनको वो राइटर्स के बारे में ज्ञान बाद में मिलता है. So सबसे पहले uh, Ambassador Suri, how did you discover your grandfather's works? Hundred years down the lane. Look here, um, we grew up in his shadow. Um, he was, um, I was twelve when he passed away in nineteen seventy one. So, बचपन की यादें हैं उनके पास बैठना उनसे कहानियाँ सुनने किस्से सुनने खासकर गर्मियों की छुट्टियों में हम सब अपने गांव में प्रीतनगर जो हमारे सर के से करीब बीस किलोमीटर दूर है Uh, we would go there um and and uh, the evening was always about uh, uh, listening to his stories uh, and he would entertain um, all of us youngsters and make up stories as he would go along and at that time of course we had no uh, idea that we were 
listening perhaps to Punjabi's greatest storyteller because he happened to be our uh, grandfather. Um, I think pehli baar jab mujhe pata laga ke unki kya ahmiyat hai was when he passed away. And as I said, I was all of 12. But we saw the parade of VIPs coming. Even Gyani Zell Singh, who was then chief minister, came to one of the uh, ceremonies. So I knew that my father was a great personality. He was such a great personality. But in the family, there is a complacency in the family. Um, and uh, for me personally in this journey it wasn't until 1997 when I was posted to the Indian Embassy in Washington so interesting year because uh, it was the centenary year of Bauji Nasaranak Singh and you happened to have a Punjabi I.K. Gujral as the Prime Minister of the country who was also a great fan of my grandfather's so they said that they should be able to make their centenary in a very long time. And now they are in the Bhargir Embassy. So I unsuspectingly started getting invitations to events in Los Angeles, in Chicago, in uh, Miami and, and places like that, uh, saying we are organizing an event as Punjabi community to celebrate the life and times and literature of Nanak Singh and you, will you please come? So I had to leave my embassy hat behind and wear the grandson's hat uh, and, 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 and land up at those events. And that's when I think I f it was my first recognition of the powerful legacy that, that I, as a grandson, enjoyed. I would meet particularly elderly women um, whose sons and daughters are now well settled in America and these were ladies in their 60s and 70s who would come and say they'd catch my get, take my hand and say Bete, tum samajhte nahi ho. Hum to Punjabi unke naval padke sikhe. Wow. or you would have other people saying Bete, humne to Punjabi padhi is liye ki unke naval pad sakhe kya baat to that was the realization for me. And along with this, I think the second sort of influence was came from my mother, who was herself a teacher, a lecturer in Punjabi at a college in Amritsar. And she would often tell me that, look, your grandfather was a genius of a storyteller. And if he had not written in a very limited language like Gurmukhi, he perhaps would have been internationally renowned. So you as the only one in the family jiski angrezi thodi theek thaak hai uh, have an obligation ke aap unke novels pakdo unki translation karo or uh, make sure that they reach a wider audience so that was the start of my journey and i started with pavitra papi which was a celebrated a book of his uh, from the 1930s um, and uh, so i published that uh, through penguin as the watchmaker uh, which they translated as a life incomplete. So, two novels came, and by then I was deeply into it. Uh, and I, I kind of had told myself that these are stories worth telling to a bigger audience, to a non-Punjabi audience. And especially when Khuni Visakhi reached the end of the this was 2019 or 2018 that we were having this conversation. Right. Um, okay, uh, next, who will be next? So, we said that centenary is coming, the Jalayamala Bagh massacre. Our Bauji was there. So, why did they write so long and 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 I'd never translated poetry and I had no idea how to go about it. Uh, and it was very far removed from my career of diplomacy. Uh, yeah. So it, it really was a challenge that I took up. I'll give it my best shot. And uh, you said a very interesting thing uh, that he used to write in, in Gurmukhi. 
पंजाबी नस्तलिक में भी लिखी जा सकती है जो उर्दू का रसूल खत है और गुरमुखी में भी लिखी जाती है तो डिट ही ऑल्सो राइट इन दर्दू स्क्रिप्ट नस्तलिक he knew it but he didn't hmm. um he pretty much wrote everything in uh, gurmukhi uh, and uh, uh, in fact there's a lot of interest in some of his books from the other side of the border uh, hmm. in fact uh, when khuni visakhi was uh, released to waha a kafi prasiddh writer hain journalist bhi hain unhone mujhe पता नहीं कहाँ से पूछ पाछ के ही सेंट मी नी मेल के हमें पता चला कि आपने जलिया वाला बाग के ऊपर एक किताब ट्रांसलेट की है सो दिस इज पार्ट ऑफ आर कॉमन हेरिटेज इट इज बिफोर इंडिपेंडेंस बिफोर पार्टीशन सो कैन वी हैव एक्सेस टू दिस बुक प्लीज और मैंने बड़ी मुश्किल से किसी के हाथ इधर से उधर से उनको भेजी एक कॉपी उन्होंने काफी उसका फिर लंबा चौड़ा रिव्यू भी किया क्या बात तो जो शायद जो पॉलिटिकल पावर्स है वो नहीं कर सकते वो लेखक और वो राइटर्स कर सकते हैं दे कैन ट्रांसेंड बॉर्डर्स दे कैन कनेक्ट पीपल एंड आई थिंक दैट वाज हिज होल वर्ल्ड जो उनका संसार जो उन्होंने बनाया दैट स्टूड फॉर दीज दीज वैल्यूज ऑफ कम्युनल हारमोनी ऑफ नो बॉर्डर्स तो उनकी ना एक एक ऐशान उनकी एक बड़ी इम्पॉर्टेंट एक लिखित है जो हमने उनके म्यूजियम में भी लगाई है हमने गुरु नानक देव यूनिवर्सिटी में थोड़ी सी जगह लेकर एक नानक सिंह सेंटर बनाया है और, और वहाँ पर उन्होंने हमने उनकी अपनी हैंड राइटिंग में है पंजाबी में नानक सिंह जन्म तो पंजाबी जन्म से वो पंजाबी हैं करम तो भारती करम से वो भारती हैं और धर्म से धर्म तो मानव पूजी सो ही इज अ पंजाबी बाय बर्थ एंड इंडियन बाय चॉइस एंड हिज क्रीड इज ह्यूमैनिटी क्या बात और आजकल के जमाने में ये बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट लाइन है ही वाज बोर्न इन चक हामिद इन झेलम समवेयर इट्स अ स्मॉल प्लेस इन झेलम अक्रॉस द बॉर्डर so uh, how was his, he was born not as nanak singh but as hans raj that's so, right so he was born in a very uh, he was born in in the family his father's name was bahadur chand suri and he was born in this uh, you would say very struggling low income family uh, and at some point when he was still growing up his father left home and wahan uh, unhone peshawar mein ja kar ek kiryane ki dukan khol li तो बाबू जी की जो फॉर्मल एजुकेशन थी वो केवल चौथी जमात तक हुई क्योंकि उनको जब वो आठ नौ बरस के थे तो उनको पेशावर में ला लिया उनके फादर ने कि भाई बेटे तो आ और दुकान में मदद कर तो उसके बाद वो पहुंचे वहां और एक ही साल बाद जब वो दस साल के थे तो उनके फादर का इंतकाल हो गया एंड सो एट द एज ऑफ टेन एज द ओल्डेस्ट चाइल्ड इन द फैमिली ही वॉज अर्फन Uh, and so he didn't have the luxury of a formal education but wo kareeb 8 9 saal wahan peshawar mein rahe aur 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 wahan he had the good fortune unko shauk tha kavita ka shauk tha thodi tukbandi ka keh lijiye to he came under the influence of uh, uh, a very saintly very pious uh, granthi at the gurdwara and uh, uh, under his influence uh, gyani bag singh ka naam tha so he decided to convert to sikhism hmm. and he says ke usse unko ek zindagi mein rasta mil gaya uh, and, uh, and and gyani bag singh then became his mentor and wo khud hansraj se nanak singh ban gaye uh, aur uh, nanak singh banne ke baad unhone jo pehli ek apni kavita ki kitab likhi uska naam tha satgur mahima so these were verses that he wrote in praise of the sikh gurus and it became a runaway best seller in fact people say lakhs of copies were sold and it became unki financial sustenance ka keh lijiye but it was his early claim to fame to usi ke karan unko ek takhallus mil gaya nanak singh kavishar wow at the age of 18 or 19 lekin 1918 mein he decided ke uh, he would now come to amritsar from peshawar 
और अमृतसर पहुंच गए वो और दैट इज वाई ही वॉज प्रेजेंट एट द जलिया वाला बाग मैसेकर वेन दी प्रोटेस्ट वर ऑर्गेनाइज अगेंस्ट द रॉल एक्ट एंड जो इनकी एक खूनी बैसाखी पर अब हम आते हैं क्योंकि वो एक ऐसी किताब है जो अच्छे अच्छों को काफी कुछ हिला सकती है इमोशनली स्ट्रॉन्ग बुक दैट पीपल कैन फील अ लिटिल ओवरवेलम्ड आफ्टर रीडिंग द बुक बिकॉज ही वॉज वन ऑफ द ओनली सर्वाइवर्स ऑफ The... Well, there were other survivors. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, there were many who survived. There were many who were wounded. He himself lost his hearing uh, in one year uh, during the firing, but he was certainly amongst the fortunate ones who yeah. survived. Um, and uh, so he'd gone with two of his friends to protest against the Rawal attack, and uh, both were killed. He was knocked unconscious in the stampede when the firing began. and everybody was running helter skelter uh, and he was left among the dead so he walked away traumatized took time to recover and then wrote this long poem which again has an interesting history because soon after it was published it was banned by banned by the british bilkul uh, or uh, um, all copies were confiscated to hamari family mein agle 60 saal takriban ek ye baat si thi ke बाबूजी ने एक कविता लिखी थी पूनी विसाखी लेकिन किसी ने देखी नहीं है और इवन बाबूजी ने खुद कभी उसकी ज्यादा बात नहीं की केवल एक रेफरेंस उनकी ऑटोबायोग्राफी में है कि ये मैंने एक जलिया वाले बाग के कांड के बाद एक कविता लिखी थी बट दस नथिंग मोर दैट वी न्यू और काफी एक समझ लीजिए कि को था कि उन्नीस में हमें दोबारा we ran into this poem through a series of coincidences and it was republished after being lost for 6 decades wow wow to so, uh agar aap usse kuch padhna chahe kuch kuch ek uh... so jab maine translate kiya isko um to to make it more accessible uh ye jo poem hai humne kya kiya ki jo punjabi ka part tha usko hindi mein devnagari mein translate रेट कर दिया और बाकी हमने इंग्लिश में तो ये पोएम जो है इट्स अ वेरी विजुअल वेरी ग्राफिक अकाउंट ऑफ द इवेंट्स एंड बियॉन्ड द इवेंट्स द मूड इन अमृतसर ड्यूरिंग द फर्स्ट फोर्थ नाइट ऑफ नाइनटीन गांधी जी ने सत्याग्रह की कॉल दी थी छह अप्रैल को हड़ताल की कॉल दी थी किस तरह दुकानें शहर में बंद हो गई किस तरह लोगों ने कंप्लेन किया कि भाई हम तो फर्स्ट वर्ल्ड वॉर में हमने पांच लाख पंजाबी भेजे थे अंग्रेज के लिए लड़ने के लिए और हमें क्या मिला इन रिटर्न दिस रावलेट एक्ट विच इज सो ड्रेकोनियन सो दैट वॉज द मूड इन द सिटी उसके बाद एक दिस इज चेंज इन मूड के नाइन्थ अप्रैल को शहर में रामनवमी मनाई जा रही है और किस तरह हिंदू मुस्लिम सिख सब ने इकट्ठे रामनवमी मनाई मनाई और वो कहते हैं कविता में कि ये फेस्टिवल तो हिंदूज का था लेकिन जिस तरह मुसलमानों ने मनाया वो फेस्टिवल वो कमाल ही कर दी और बड़ी एक पावरफुल वहां रेफरेंस है कि एक ही गिलास से उन्होंने पानी पिया दे हैड दे ड्रैंक वाटर फ्रॉम द सेम ग्लास दे एट फूड फ्रॉम द सेम प्लेट एंड द ब्रिटिश वर सो स्पूक्ड बाय दिस that next morning the two principal leaders of amritsar dr saifuddin kichlu and dr satyapal are both arrested uh, and and then it tells what happened on the 10th the violence that happened on the 10th and then the build up uh, in the mood of the city to the uh, gathering in jalia bag on the 13th so i the reason i'm saying this is that fr- even from a historical point of view it's almost like a chronological account of events correct uh, but in verse through the eyes of uh, a 22 year old at that time and this 22 year old seemed to know that he is writing for posterity mm. he says that i am writing so that the tales of our martyrs can be remembered forever 
And and I'll read one small passage which is very visual about the actual time of the firing. 5.30 sharp, the clock had struck. Thousands gathered in the bag, my friends. Leaders came to lament the nation's woes, taking turns to speak out loud, my friends. Voiced grievance, hardship, anger, sorrow, saying no one listens to us, my friends. What can we do? What options left? Can't see any ray of light, my friends. Those words forlorn, they barely voiced, came soldiers thundering down, my friends. At Dyer's command, those Gurkha troops gathered in a formation tight, my friends. And fire, under tyrant's orders, they opened fire straight into innocent hearts, my friends, and fire and fire and fire they did. Some thousands of bullets were shot, my friends. Like searing hail, they felled our youth, a tempest not seen before, my friends. Riddled chests and bodies slid to the ground, each one a target large, my friends. Haunting cries for help did rend the sky. Smoke rose from smoldering guns, my friends. Just a sip of water was all they sought. Valiant youth lay dying in the dust, my friends. That narrow lane to enter the bag, sealed off on Dyer's command, my friends. No exit, no escape, no way out was left making Bagh a deathly trap, my friends. A fortunate few somehow survived, while most died then and there, my friends. Some ran with bullets ripping their chest, stumbling to their painful end, my friends. Others caught the bullet while running away, dropping lifeless in awkward heaps, my friends. In minutes, the bag so strewn with corpses, none knew just who was who, my friends. Many of them did look like Sikhs, amid Hindus and Muslims plenty, my friends. In the prime of their youth, our brave hearts lay, gasping for one last breath, my friends. Long hair lay matted in blood and grime, in slumber deep this sleep, my friends, says Nanak Singh, who knows their state, but God, the one and only, my friends. He has given all the details of the, and do, do you happen to know when did he write this, after how, after how long of this? Well, you know, the only thing that we know is stories that we heard from my grandmother who lived for a long time after he had passed away. Mm. Uh, and, and, and she would tell us that he was so completely traumatized by what he had seen that he refused to speak about it to anyone. Uh, and, and people today will call it post-traumatic stress disorder or something like that. Okay. Um, but um, he, what we do know is that the poem was published in May 1920, so about a year after the event, uh, and then lost hmm. uh, for the next 60 years. Uh, so he he probably took time to recover and then get his thoughts together to write. And after that, you uh, the next book that you translated was the partition, the two books on the partition of India. hum. 75 years Manachuke independence ke, we are in the 76th year. Uh, how do you see the relevance of his, the two books, Hymns in Blood and The Game of Fire, A Game of Fire? This the, the, It's a sequel and a prequel. How do you see the relevance of that before coming to the story? But uh, when you read the, the book for the first time, what thoughts came to your mind? Well, the reason for, to start with that I picked these two novels from the 38 novels that yeah. he wrote. So there's, there's plenty of choice. 
was that when the country is celebrating Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav, um, these were two books that were written more or less at the time of partition. Um, and uh, it's important that the people of India remember the huge price that Punjab and to an extent Bengal paid for the independence of the country. Uh, these are the two states that suffered the most and certainly Punjab suffered hugely. Uh, it was ripped apart. Uh, and uh, so one reason was that timing that you, you're celebrating 75 years of independence. Um, the second was that both of these books have a profound message, uh, which I think is as relevant today as it was when these books were written uh, 76 or 77 years ago. Um, and, and that message um, at one level is beware the risk of rousing communal passions, religious fervor, because once it rises, it can rapidly get out of control and it can tail, turn normal people into brutes who ca carry out the most unspeakable violence against fellow human beings. Um, the process of moving from a shared humanity to a process of the other, where you uh, start seeing somebody who was your neighbor till yesterday uh, as the other because he or she comes from a different faith, um, twists our mind. And, and so he uh, warns us that beware also of leaders, of politicians who will try to rouse your passions uh, on the grounds of religion uh, and, 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 and you are going to be swept away in, an, in a tidal wave uh, that you don't know it's, it's going to consume you as well. Uh, and, 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 you know, so these two books uh, have this very, it doesn't shy away from describing the uh, violence and the pillage and the rape and murder that happened during uh, the run up to the partition. But even in the worst of times, he has characters whose humanity survives. And, 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 and I think he wants us to recognize that it's not black and white. Uh, and, 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 and that even in the worst, in the most adverse of circumstances, you will have heroes who will step forward. And what I find remarkable is the way he expresses his own very profound commitment to secularism through the voices of his characters. Um, he is, he says in the introduction, in the uh, uh, preface to the book, uh, that I'm a devout Sikh, but if you ask me, religion is my personal matter, but humanity is universal. And if I had, and he also <laughs> quotes Granth Sahib in in the uh, in the forward. Well, he he quotes Guru Granth Sahib. He quotes uh, Bhakt Kabir uh, at length. He, he quotes uh, other uh, stalwarts of the Bhakti movement. Uh, he quotes Guru Gobind Singh, who uh, says, Manas ki jat sabe ke pehchan bo. We are all one creed of humanity. Uh, so so he, he, he leaves us in no doubt about where he stands. But the, uh, what I loved is the way he uses two, three of his characters to leave with us that very profound message that this humanity should be given precedence over narrow uh, uh, commitment to religion or you know or a bigoted view of another religion bilkul isme ek aur khas baat jo unhone bhi boli apne forward mein especially in game of fire ke jo characters hain wo imaginary ho sakte hain lekin jo events hain jo context hai wo 100% accurate hai and he has given his own uh, sources also. The way he researched, 
चाहे वो चाहे वो खुद के देखे हुए हालात हो या न्यूज़पेपर्स में जो आया जो अनाउंसमेंट्स आई दैट्स हाउ कमिटेड ही वाज टू टेल एज यू सेड फॉर पोस्टेरिटी वांटेड टू रिकॉर्ड दीज एक्सपीरियंसेस व्हिच ही थॉट इज इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर हिस्ट्री जो जो मेमोरी का काम है चाहे वो ट्रॉमा उन्होंने झेला जो भी ट्रॉमा था पार्टीशन का या वैसाखी का लेकिन उससे आगे बढ़कर उन्हें लगा कि शायद ये ट्रॉमा से आने वाले जो जो नस्लें हैं उनको बहुत उनको ये जानना जरूरी है कि जो भी हमने सहा वो आगे ना हो दैट हिस्ट्री शुड नॉट बी रिपीटेड और रीजन दीज टू बुक्स आई थिंक इम्पोर्टेंट वन इज their contemporaneous history both of them were published in 1948 khun de sole which is hymns in blood this was published in february 48 for the first time yeah. and uh, game of fire was published in uh, september 48 so mm. by 47 nanak singh ji was already a celebrated intellectual in punjab he had written a number of best sellers uh, you could say he was uh, one of the leading public intellectuals in amritsar at that period so his words matter to us even for the record and and he says these books are historical fiction but why am i writing these books i'm not a historian uh, so why why don't i leave it to a historian yeah to document this period and and he says that the reason i'm doing this is i'm mindful that with the passage of time when a historian from one community or another writes about this period we've been so polarized and the passions have been running so high that they will undoubtedly cloud the vision of whoever writes about this period so i don't want to wait for that passage of time when people can look back through their particular prism uh, at this period uh, i want to write as i saw it mm. unvarnished and and he says that i know this is a bitter pill to swallow uh, and 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 some of my friends say maybe i should have sugar coated it uh, but i chose not to i wanted to tell it as i saw it and and i think that's why uh even for students of history mm. these two books are important um hymns and blood um when we released it um at the nehru center in london um i was in conversation with an author who is from up originally and he was saying what he what struck him when he read hymns and blood uh khunde sohle in punjabi was the texture of life in an, this idyllic village called chakri in a uh, near ravalpindi uh, and how the lives of the hindu muslim and sikh communities are so closely woven together mm. how they celebrate each other's festivals it's a muslim majority village but the village elder is a hindu uh, who is a very erudite uh, old man uh he said in up in aligarh or other places that he knew well this was not the case you already had certain amount of uh, divisions so uh, it, 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 you know even to understand what life was like pre partition before these communal forces i think hymns in blood is extremely important the way it traces life in pre partition punjab in a village where communities have lived together in harmony for generation upon generation until life is upended by the uh, uh communal forces um a game of fire is set entirely in amritsar yes entirely in 1947 uh and 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 the reason i think game of fire agdi khed is such a brave book um and uh, it's such a brave book to write in 1947 48 uh is that nanak singh ji actually has the intellectual honesty to make us face up to the reality that 
it wasn't just the Muslims who committed violence against us. We were no laggards mm. when it came to violence. Um, and, and certainly uh, if Lahore saw the mass exodus of the Hindu and Sikh communities, uh, and it was particularly painful for the Sikhs because Lahore was the capital of Punjab under Maharaja Ranjit Singh. And, and so there was a certain emotional attachment to the city. And, and so to have in this new country without Lahore was a, 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 a huge blow to the Sikh psyche. Uh, but at the same time, when I was researching for this book, um, I saw that according to the 1941 census, Amritsar had a 46% Muslim population. Yeah. We grew up in a city where there was virtually none. Correct. So, so clearly that huge population was also either killed or forced to yes, flee. Yeah. Uh, right? Uh, so so uh, today if we speak about Gaza and ethnic cleansing that the Israelis are trying to do, well, we saw that in, in, in 1947, didn't we? Uh, and, 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 and he forces us to accept that instead of just giving it a communal twist, let's accept that the Sikhs were as violent on the Muslims as the Muslims were in Peshawar and in uh, Rawalpindi on the Sikhs. And it takes courage to say that. Okay. So how was the initial response when the book came out? Did How was the reaction of the people when they read the book? Well, uh, what he uh, says is that it was a, it was a bitter pill and uh, uh, people found it hard to swallow it. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I guess that's what the writer's integrity is okay. to, to not compromise uh, on the story that he wants to tell. Uh, and, uh, and he stuck to it. And, and and now seventy five years later, it's for me to again retell that bitter story. Yeah, and you have done it tremendously well because considering you did study literature in college, you are not a trained professionally trained uh, translator. You took took it upon yourself to translate your grandfather's work with uh, the most precise that you could be uh, in both the translations. I think that's that's commendable, and it is also commendable because uh, these two books, especially uh, a game of fire and hymns of blood, and even Baisakhi, which is a poetry. What is important is that they provide you the alternate view of history, which is missing in the official accounts. History, which academicians write, is often limited in the scope that they they are worked out in archives and with the official records. But the story that Nanak Singh Sahib is telling us in these books are not written in any uh, official accounts and they won't be because these are uh, embarrassing histories for the Raj and you know which they didn't want to come out and that's why they banned the book uh, you know Vaisakhi was banned Kuni Vaisakhi was banned how do you see uh, the role of fiction in historical narratives like the fictions like your grandfather's I think it is extremely important. And the reason is, this is not to diminish the importance of history. Uh, I think historians do a tremendous job in uncovering the evidence, which hopefully becomes the uh, basis of the history that we uh, study. But beyond that, I think historical fiction has the advantage that people Human beings remember stories. Um, they may not remember dry facts. They may not remember random dates. Uh, they may not remember the name of a Raja Maharaja, somebody that they can't relate to. But stories have that um, emotional connect with, with, with people uh, and perhaps register in a different part of our brain. Uh, and, and maybe endure longer than the lesson that you might learn in a particular class. So I think I think uh, uh, historical fiction uh, plays a really important role if it is uh, written with a degree of honesty, 
as my grandfather has uh, managed to do uh, and 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 you know for him it wasn't just about writing a novel and i'll just go back to a point of time in his life in 1922 uh, when he was 24 25 years old uh, and he uh, was jailed um, because he was protesting against the Sikh uh, the British control over the Sikh Gurdwaras. And, uh, and he spent about nine months in Lahore jail, uh, in Borstal jail in Lahore. And while he was in jail, he met this uh, somewhat senior Congress party activist who had also been jailed. But because he had some influence, he was able to come in with a trunk load of books. And this trunk load included novels of Munshi Premchand, which my grandfather read in prison in 1922. And while in prison, he said, this is what I want to do with my life. I want to write books which will reform society. And, and, and he actually started writing his first novel while he was still in jail. And then there was a raid on his cell and it was the half-baked okay. manuscript was uh, confiscated. Mm -hmm. And that particular novel he didn't write till 1940. And that's the one I translated, Adkhariya Full, A Life Incomplete, uh, which would otherwise have been his first novel uh, had it not uh, been interrupted by the jailer. Uh, but, 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 but I guess what I want to say is that whether it's the power of the verse in a poem like Khuni Visakhi uh, or the stories of... Uh, Satnam and Yusuf and Naseem and Baba Panesha that we read in these two novels, those characters remain with us. Their right. stories remain with us. And I think that's the power of, uh, of uh, storytelling. Yeah. But in the recent times, there have been a, a load of books on uh, partition. A lot of people are writing on partition. Uh, they might be the third generation or the fourth generation a partition, uh, you know, people from partition family. Uh, do you see a certain kind of romanticization happening with some of the literature that is coming out? I don't know whether you would call it romanticization. I think the two, three books that I've picked up recently, um, Anchal Malhotra's uh, Remembrances, which is really oral histories that she has yeah, painstakingly really painstakingly put together yeah. uh, from a generation that will not be around for very long, right? Uh, so, so, so it's important that she's got those oral histories right. which people will look back on so that it was a seminal moment in our history. It may not appear that way if you are in Karnataka or in uh, Tamil Nadu, but certainly in Punjab and in Bengal, it was embedded in our consciousness. Uh, and, and 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 so I think it, uh, she's done a great job. I read this book by Kavita Puri, where oh, she's yes. interviewed the, voices. the diaspora yes. uh, in the in UK, the UK. Uh, yes. in, in, in UK, and 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 taken their uh, voices uh, into her uh, into her book. So I think it all adds to our collective understanding. Uh, so you know, on one hand, you have. Nanak Singh Ji's novels, which are um, written at that time mm. and so have a degree of authenticity uh, about them and collectively add to our understanding. And then you have these um, really useful works that uh, I think both uh, Kavita and Anshal have done. So more power to them. Yes, definitely. Both of them have done great work. One of the books I can see in the background, the, in the language of remembering, I believe, on your bookshelf. Uh, so, uh, did he also meet his uh, contemporary writers, be it Amrita, Pritam, or 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 uh, revolutionaries like Bhagat Singh when he was in jail or out of the jail? Well, uh, I have no record of uh, Bhagat Singh because uh, I think Bhagat Singh Ji uh, was. Uh, I mean, I, they wouldn't have run into each other, but uh, my grandfather certainly wrote a very important book on the Gadar movement yes, uh, and uh, uh, in which he uh, builds the whole story of, around Kartar Singh Sarabha. Um, you know, and, and, and Kartar Singh Sarabha, again, uh, revolutionary, uh, died or, or was hanged at the age of, I think, 19 or 20 or something. 
Um, and and uh, that's the book on which he won the Sahitya Academy Award in 1962. But I do know that for that, he researched extensively and spoke with some of the other original uh, founders of the Gada movement. So again, it's the category of historical fiction where he did deep research and then brought forth his, his characters. Hmm. Hmm. And as you also we were mentioning before the conversation started that when India got independence, Punjab and Bengal were not celebrating. They were still lamenting and the trauma even continues 75 years down the lane. And it is in these times that we also see the rise of communal uh, tensions happening in different parts of India today because of all the socio-political environment. And it is in this time that the world, the literary word of Nanak Singh comes to, uh, should come to into the limelight. Writers like him and his contemporaries who wrote in, in Punjabi or in Bengali, they stood for a united uh, society, united India. They, they might not be Gandhian or any other, you know, sort of characterizations of politics, but they certainly stood for the, the, the unitedness, the communal harmony part of it, which is clearly uh, you have mentioned in the book also. How do you see the relevance of Nanak Singh in our times, uh, Ambassador Suri? Well, you know, uh, the whole issue of independence was a deeply sensitive one. And if you look at hymns in blood, in the fairly detailed foreword that Nanak Singh Ji writes for hymns in blood, he says that anybody who knows me knows that every pore in my body has been striving for India's independence. And I have yearned for this day. And yet, now that we are approaching, should I celebrate? And in fact, he says 1947 was an accursed year. This was the year in which we lost our humanity uh, and brother turned upon brother. Uh, and I'll, I'll just, to illustrate that point, uh, I'll read a very short passage from A Game of Fire, which might be a good note to uh, end our conversation. Uh, because he builds this beautiful portrait about the celebrations of 15th August that are being planned in UP, in Madras province, in other parts of India. The tricolor will fly on all buildings. The prisoners who have been languishing for so many years will be released from the prisons, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And he says, our head spins in wonder as we step back and look at the enthusiasm and energy with which these celebrations are being planned. Martial law is to be imposed in 11 districts of Punjab and other arrangements are being put in place to make sure that nothing unpleasant happens when the limbs of Mother India are being hacked. Leading members of our communities, meanwhile, are sharpening the spears of Hindu Mahasabha and direct action because they feel that the Congress High Command has been unjust to them, that they have received a smaller piece of Mother India's body than they expected. The Sikhs are convulsing with their own anger over the division, complaining that the large and fleshy thigh from the leg that was Punjab has gone to Pakistan, while they were left with just the spindly calf. The Muslim League, to be sure, had some reason to rejoice over the part that they had received, but they viewed the celebrations with the jaundiced look of one who is observing a wedding at his enemy's home. How did the jubilant songs of independence sound to those whose ears were still ringing with the haunting cries of thousands of innocent victims? whose eardrums had become accustomed to the loud reports of gunshots and the deafening boom of exploding bombs. For them, the joyful tunes of independence were like hymns in blood. The celebrations were like a game of fire. In India today, we really need to reflect on the way the way we have gone uh, since independence, 
the way we have uh, further partitioned ourselves over the years, even if we were not partitioned families, we have now become uh, part of the same game of fire, as he says. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Ambassador Suri, for taking out time for this conversation. Uh, hopefully, we'll meet in Amritsar. There is a promise to be fulfilled that we meet in Amritsar, we visit the Jallianwala Bagh and have a conversation there uh, and on, on various issues and even on translations, the question of memory, the question of trauma that needs to be further um, discussed in, in our times because the kind of uh, reimagining of the past happening in India today, be it the the remodification of the Jallianwala Bagh, making it a fancy wonderland, you know, beautiful looking arches and doorways. That's that is concerning for people who whose families faced uh, the trauma of those events. So uh, this book, A Game of Fire, translated by Ambassador Suri, uh, Hymns of Blood. Uh, translated by Ambassador Suri and even uh, the one by Khuni Baisaki. These are the three books that I have gone through uh, in the last two years, 22, 23, and now this 24. I hope that you bring out all the 55 works of uh, Nanak Singh Sahab uh, into English and hopefully this will be translated in other Indian languages as well, uh, be it Gujarati or Bengali and other in the South, so that people would know some part of history that they are unaware of. And this is published by Harper Collins. We are deeply thankful to Harper Collins, uh, the team at Harper Collins, the editors and the people who uh, collaborated with us for this conversation because these are conversations worth having in our times where critical thinking is not allowed, where the, 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 the space for dissent is shrinking. This is the place where we question uh, our memory, our our history. Thank you so much, Ambassador Suri. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining in. And we will be back with another conversation very soon. Thank you for your passion and keep spreading the light. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. And we would just ask you to uh, stay back for a few moments. We want to record some more video with you. But for those who are watching us live, thank you so much for being here. Keep reading, keep questioning, keep thinking. That's how you'll keep yourself sane in these insane times. Uh, thank you and have a great day.